Hello there, true crimesters. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Nancy here uh, with T-Cell Logic, and this is my dog, Socrates, who will be my co-host today. Um, he may or may not stay throughout the entire video, but if you see me leaning over or putting him down, it's because he no longer wanted to sit here with me. So today's case is about Suzanne Morphew. So let's get right into it and see what this case is all about. And don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments on the bottom. I want to know what you think about this case. What do you think happened? Who do you think is responsible? What are your opinions? I want to hear them. Let me know, okay? Okay, so Susan Morphew, who is 49 when she went missing, was originally from Alexandria, Indiana which is uh, where her and her husband, Barry, had lived most of their life before moving to Colorado in 2018 with their two teenage daughters, Macy and Mallory. So Suzanne has been described by her sister, Melinda Mormon, as a passive yet gentle soul. She was the rose among thorns. A two-time cancer survivor, she and Barry moved out to Colorado to start a new chapter in their life, away from Indiana, which would also mean being away from Suzanne's family. Barry and Suzanne were parents to two girls, Mallory and Macy, who were you know, grown children. On this particular weekend, they were out on a camping trip. Barry owned BLM Enterprises, which is a landscaping business um, where he was, you know, listed as the main owner. And on his Facebook, he indicated that he was a volunteer firefighter as well. So Suzanne went missing on May 10th, 2020, which would be Mother's Day in 2020. So she supposedly went on a bike ride near her house in Maysville, Colorado, and her daughters, Macy and Mallory, were out on a camping trip that weekend, but they did plan on visiting with their mom on that Sunday, and they were the ones who actually initially rose the alarm you know, that they couldn't find their mom. They tried ringing her, and they just weren't able to get through to her. So once this happened, I'm not sure exactly in what order it happened or if it actually even happened in this order or this way. There's a lot of information out there about this case, so I'm just you know, going off what I was able to find. Um, but anyway, so the girls called their mom. They weren't able to get a hold of her. So after that, they either called their dad, Barry, or they called the neighbors. Uh, the neighbor's name is Jean or Jeannie. And um, they asked her if she had seen their mom. They weren't able to get a hold of her. It was at that point, I'm not sure exactly how it happened again, that Barry got in contact with Jeannie and asked her to go check on Suzanne. And I'm pretty sure during that call, he asked her to check to see if there was a bike there. Um, because if there wasn't a bike, then, you know, Suzanne may have gone on a bike ride. So Jeannie, also called Suzanne. She wasn't able to get a hold of her. She decided to go over to the house and, you know, ring the doorbell and when answered. They did check to see if there was a bike there since Barry had instructed them to do so. If the bike wasn't there, she was probably on a bike ride. There was no bike. So this part here um, about the bike where they checked for the bike is likely where the whole bike ride red herring, if you will, came into play because no one actually knows if Suzanne went on a bike ride. This was all instigated by Barry, the whole bike ride thing. The Chaffee, I think it's Chaffee or Chaffee County Communication Center received a call about a missing female at about 5.45 p.m. on Sunday, May 10th, 2020. Suzanne was reported missing by her neighbor who indicates that Suzanne had failed to return from her bike ride. Barry Morphew, who at this point in time was not considered a suspect, claimed that Suzanne was the love of her life, but the family feared that he was possibly behind her disappearance. So Suzanne had supposedly gone on a bike ride near the trails of her Maysville, Colorado house. 
The last person to have seen Suzanne was Barry. The morning of Mother's Day, May 10th, was supposedly the last time that Barry had seen Suzanne. So, what about her social media? Well, Suzanne was present, or did have a social media presence, and the last time she had posted was on Facebook. She had posted a picture of her and her daughters, Mallory and Macy. According to Barry, he had a landscaping job to do in Denver, Colorado that day. And that's where he was, 150 miles away. So first he said he was at firefighter training, uh, which he was a volunteer firefighter in Colorado. I had, I had to put my dog down. First he said he was at firefighter training in uh, Denver. And then soon after that, he then changed the story and said he was in Denver for a landscaping job with his company. Okay. Okay, so that May 10th, which was a Sunday, Barry ordered some of his employees out to Denver to do the so-called landscaping job on a Sunday, which from what I understand would have been impossible because they wouldn't have been able to get the permission they need from either the city or the sheriff's department to work on a Sunday. Um, it's just something that I guess is not possible um, in the field of construction or landscaping. So that whole ordeal of him calling his employees out to Denver just seemed really weird. It's almost like he was trying to establish an alibi. Um, you'll understand at the end why I say these things. Barry was staying at the Holiday Inn in Denver the day that Suzanne went missing. And it is said apparently when he left the room, he left it smelling of chlorine like a lot of chlorine like not just a little bit of chlorine a lot of chlorine the pool wasn't open and the holiday inn staff said that they do not use chlorine to clean the rooms so it was definitely not their housekeepers leaving the stench of chlorine so one of his co-workers or employees uh, named jeff puckett told the daily mail that when he took over that hotel room on May 10th, he found wet towels all over the floor and it smelled of chlorine. So that's where they got the, you know, the story about the chlorine was from Jeff Puckett, who, you know, was a friend of Barry's, worked with Barry, you know. So Jeff was in Denver because he had been called over by Barry, but Barry had left the hotel by the time he arrived, which made him pretty upset. So he was willing to talk at this point because he's in Denver, Barry left, he doesn't know what to do. He's kind of caught in the middle of this. And this chlorine smell is the same chlorine smell that they found lingering in their house. This house that they lived in, in Maysville, Colorado, was gigantic. It was huge. It was one point five million dollars that they had purchased the house for so it was a mansion and it sat on a ton of land they were pretty well off okay so Suzanne and Barry had quite a bit of money they were what people considered a loving couple they had a nice house they had beautiful daughters Suzanne was beautiful. They were a really beautiful family. So every, everything seemed to be okay for them on the outside. But like most relationships, there are those things that happen behind closed doors that, you know, you just don't expect. And in this case, it had to do with money. More than likely, it had something to do with money. Um, it's been said that you know, they were living beyond their means and that, you know, their relationship was just falling apart because of these financial pressures they had. Police were able to obtain security footage from the hotel between the dates of Thursday, May 7th and Sunday, May 10th. Barry has said in an interview with Fox 21 that he didn't do anything wrong in the hotel room. The room smelled of chlorine, but he says that he had nothing to do with the smell being in the room. Barry had purchased a plot of land shortly before Suzanne went missing. 
And during their police investigation, they had taken cadaver dogs over to this plot of land that he'd recently purchased, and they had in fact picked up the scent of human remains twice there. But there was no body found, so nothing came of the cadaver dogs picking up that scent. You know, it's we're not really sure what what exactly happened there. So he ended up selling that plot of land in February of 2021 after claiming guardianship of Suzanne. He also ended up selling the family home in Salia, Colorado in March of 2021. So I believe Salida is close to Maysville, if not right by there, but I'll show you in the map here where it's located so you can see. So he'd sold this property that they were living in since they had moved there back in April of 2018. And one of the main reasons he had sold it is because he said that his daughters were too afraid to be home ever since their mom went missing, which is understandable. I mean, these poor girls, that house probably reminds them of her. The trails are close by. It, it seems as if the trails were on the property, if not like right next to it. But I mean, this was a really secluded area. It was a really wealthy area. So it wouldn't surprise me if the trails were part of their property or something like that. They had the means, I'm, you know, it was right by her house. So anyway, what I'm trying to get at is I can understand how those girls would feel uncomfortable being at the house that their mom was last seen at and uh, also he wanted to add on to there so it was basically you know because of what happened to Suzanne there wasn't any other reason it wasn't that he couldn't you know pick up the tab on the house or you know they were struggling to pay the mortgage or whatever it may be it was because of what happened to Suzanne so he wanted to make that very clear so after Suzanne went missing you know in about May 2020 Barry posted a video on Facebook. So on this video on Facebook, he pleaded for her return. Um, but since that video, he hasn't really said a word since. I'm, I mean, not directly related to finding her or pleading for someone to bring her back or for her to come back. It's mostly just been about him. Um, but we'll get into that, you know, further in the video. So during that video, he also offered a reward of $100,000 and a family friend offered another $100,000. So it equaled to $200,000 for her safe return or for information leading to her whereabouts. Now, even though he posted that video and he played the part of the mourning husband who was very upset that his wife was missing, he never took part in any of the searches that were put on for Suzanne. So there were two major searches, the first one by the Sheriff's Department, the investigators, and then there was one set up by Suzanne's brother, Andrew, and he had nothing to do with either one of them. Also, it was a little bit odd that he had posted a video on Facebook so soon after she'd gone missing and he was already offering a uh, reward money which I find a little bit odd because it just seemed like it was so soon like why so quick to offer a reward how do we know she's not gonna come back how do we know she's not just taking a break from from her everyday life but that's just my opinion. I'm not sure, you know, what was going through his head. So during this video, I just wanted to quote the video. Um, I may include a clip in here depending on what the copyright claims are or what the copyright situation is there. But let me just uh, summarize and quote Barry from this video that he put up on Facebook. So in the video, Barry says, Oh, Suzanne, if anyone is out there that can hear this, that has you, please, we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you. No questions asked, however much they want. I will do whatever it takes to get you back. Honey, I love you and I want you back, so bad. Barry Morphew pleads in the video, 
to the missing mom. So that's what he was pleading this on the video. You know. So during this video, it's really interesting because if you look at his body language throughout the entire video when he was pleading for Suzanne's return, you can see him shaking his head like nonstop. Like throughout the entire video, he's just like... And it's just really odd, like... Of course, if you ask like a body language expert, they're going to tell you that that's like a sign of like, no, this isn't going to happen. I know it's not going to happen. She's not going to return. I already know what happened in my head. But for the sake of, you know, appeasing the public and the police, I will post this video and make it seem like and she might come home. But... What I gathered from that video was that he knew more than he was letting on to and he just wanted to keep lying, essentially. And I'm looking to the side because I have notes. I don't have this whole case memorized, so I apologize. Eventually, as I post more videos, hopefully, I will get better at this and I won't inconvenience anyone with me looking to the side. A few months after the disappearance of Suzanne, Barry spoke about how the local police department were trying to accuse him of his wife's disappearance. And of course, Barry had maintained his innocence since day one, which, you know, if, if he's innocent, then, you know, great. But it's common procedure for the police department or investigators to look into the spouse first, you know, or the person who last saw her, which in this case would have been Barry. So it only makes sense that they were looking at him, but he did not like this at all and he felt the need to really defend himself. He was not guilty. There's no way he did this. You know, don't look into me. There's just no way. And I quote Barry, the sheriff's department screwed this whole thing up from the beginning and now they're trying to cover it up and blame it on me which is what barry said not long after the disappearance and the facebook post police found suzanne's bike and when they found the bike mike said that the police had not properly documented the discovery correctly and that they had destroyed evidence. A massive search for Suzanne was carried out through Shafee County, Colorado. That included search dogs, tactical mountain rescuers, divers, and even the FBI. So early in the search, Suzanne's bike and a personal belonging that had not been disposed were found. And, uh, that's when Barry accused police of destroying evidence. Um, they were able to locate the bike off the side of a like a side of a road, and it wasn't too far down the hill, but it you know it was a little bit hard to see. Um, I'll post a picture on the screen right now so you can see where it was located. Um, if you look at that pink ribbon that they have there for Suzanne, that's where the bike was found. So, police also searched their $1.5 million mansion twice since the investigation began. And we don't really know what they found. A lot of this information has been sealed and is unavailable to the public. The FBI searched the construction site Barry was working on in Salida, Colorado, which was about 12 miles away from their home in Maysville, Colorado. A resident near the construction site said that they were awoken by an extremely loud noise from that area the night before Suzanne disappeared. The FBI did not find any clues in the construction site, but it was definitely a good tip to have to know that there was an unusually loud noise coming from that site the night before Suzanne went missing. Barry's behavior during the investigation and before the investigation has been heavily scrutinized and for good reason. Um, but it has especially been scrutinized by Suzanne's family. So one of Barry's biggest critics has been Andrew, who is Suzanne's brother. And he has come out and said that he does not believe that Suzanne ever got on her bike on May 10th. 
but that this was actually a case of domestic abuse and that he does not believe Suzanne is alive. So Andrew, so Andrew says that he believes that his sister died on May 9th and that she was hidden somewhere that night um, and that this is a case of domestic abuse. He does not believe she died elsewhere. She died at home and that he believes Barry is responsible. Andrew has said that he believes someone pushed her bike down a hill, that the supposed crime scene was staged. Andrew has pleaded with Barry to take a polygraph. She has two daughters without answers and their father, who is 87 at the time, has cancer and needs answers. Um, I did want to mention that their father has since passed away from cancer. So he died not knowing where his daughter was, what had happened to her, which is really, really sad. So Barry has not hesitated in clapping back at Andrew and the things he's saying about him as far as you know, not believing him and thinking that he might be responsible. Barry said that Suzanne had always described him, Andrew, as a bad brother and that he hadn't ever shown interest in Suzanne until she went missing. Barry went as far as to say that Suzanne had spent many nights on his shoulders crying asking why her siblings refused to show her love, which is just so unnecessary. I mean, they're all suffering. They all want to know what happened to Suzanne, and Barry is just being a big clown and continues to be a clown throughout this entire case, this entire investigation. And if he didn't make it so obvious, how little he cared about finding her. Maybe people wouldn't say this. And I don't want to make it seem like I think it was Barry. Um, I mean, I do think it was Barry, but you know, he's innocent until proven guilty. Let's not forget that. He has to have his day in court. He's entitled to a fair trial. And that's where we will determine what happened and whether or not he's guilty or not. Because at this point, we can only speculate. So Barry denies that he was ever given a polygraph, but he has admitted to giving contradictory versions of his bobcat on one occasion when being questioned. So he blames this on feeling befuddled in the immediate aftermath of Suzanne's disappearance, which is understandable, but still, he gave contradictory statements, so. You know, that's their point, is he gave contradictory statements. So Barry quickly theorized that Suzanne had been eaten by a mountain lion or possibly had been attacked by a gang of human traffickers. He says, we are just a godly, loving, caring family and this thing is just a tragedy which it is a tragedy, but it's very unlikely that Suzanne was attacked by a mountain lion or kidnapped to be put into human trafficking. Um, you know, if it was a mountain lion, they would have definitely found traces of Suzanne. The bike would have been in really bad condition and you know, they probably would have dragged her and it would have been a messy scene. There would definitely be more of a crime scene, if you will, but that's just one of his theories. Andrew had said to Barry, hey, I don't think she fell off the hill on that bicycle or rode over the edge. I believe a human being threw this down there. An animal did not attack her because there absolutely was no blood evidence and no tracks on the ground, no scent from an animal. He said, I stood there and looked and I realized that nobody rode over the side of that hill. There would have been signs of a struggle or you would have been skinned up. He has a very good point. Um, if there was that type of struggle out in that mountainous area, he would have... You know, someone would have definitely seen evidence of that taking place. So Barry has been working very hard at 
trying to take the spotlight away from himself. He's been trying to convince the police that he had nothing to do with Suzanne's disappearance. His focus has not been on finding Suzanne. Their daughters, Macy and Mallory, have remained quiet on the case, but they support their dad. I can't imagine how hard it would be to even think that your own father would have something to do with your mother's disappearance. Okay, so recently, just in 2021, um, in the turn of events, after a year, Barry Lee Morphew was arrested. Despite there being no body, investigators feel confident with the evidence that they do have that they were given the okay to arrest Barry. Investigators did not elaborate on what evidence they have, but he was arrested during a traffic stop in Poncho Springs, Colorado. It went smoothly. He didn't resist. He was arrested. Barry Morphew now stands accused of three crimes so far. Murder after deliberation, tampering with physical evidence, and attempt to influence a public servant. They do not expect any more arrests in this case. The investigators have stated that they executed more than 135 search warrants across Colorado and interviewed more than 400 individuals in multiple states. Sheriff also added that investigators plowed through more than 1,400 tips. That is a lot. One of Suzanne's friends, Tisha Leeway, said that she pretty much suspected Barry was behind her disappearance. Uh, friends had invited Barry to a lot of activities that they had put together for Suzanne, and he declined the invitation every time. He just you know, didn't go to any of these vigils that they'd set up. Leeway said, when I got the news this morning, it was a good feeling that he was put behind bars, but it's still not over. We have got to go through the case, through the trial, through everything, but we still need to find her. She still needs to be brought to her resting place and she is not there yet. I feel that if they're able to arrest Barry, with no body, they must have some really, really solid information as to what happened. Since Barry's arrest, he has actually had even more charges filed against him. Um, <laughs> uh, these charges are pretty bizarre, if you ask me. Um, but let's go over them just so you can get an idea of what other stuff this guy is capable of. One of the new charges, which is really bizarre, is that the Sheffield County Clerk filed a report of alleged voter fraud in October of 2020. The clerk told investigators that they had received a presidential ballot from Suzanne, even though she was missing. The ballot did not contain Suzanne's signature on it, but it did list Barry as a witness. The ballot was seized as a piece of evidence by the investigators. On April 22, 2021, Barry was asked by the FBI agents why he had sent in Suzanne's presidential ballot. Barry's response was bizarre. Just because I wanted Trump to win, I know she, and he means Suzanne, was going to vote for Trump anyways, he told investigators. He also said he thought the other guys were cheating, so he would give him and by him, he means former President Trump, another vote. Barry said that he didn't know it was illegal for him to submit a ballot for someone else. He thought he could do that for his spouse. That definitely sounds like something Barry would say. This man is so full of himself. Everything he's done so far during this entire investigation, this entire time he's been in the spotlight for his wife being missing, has been about himself for himself and only himself he has acted like the morning husband but he hasn't demonstrated his interest in finding his wife it's like he knows something or he knows something you know he's just i don't get it i just don't get his behavior i don't understand 
like what is going through his head but we will find out eventually when he goes on trial so i hope that now that he's been arrested her family is able to find closure on her disappearance and also hopefully he will let them know where Suzanne is located you know let her rest in peace she's already been through a lot no one but him knows where she is and I hope that he has that love in there for her for his daughters to confess and tell the investigators where Susan is located at this point that's the least he could do I mean not only have they lost Suzanne the girls have lost their dad they've lost any sense of normalcy normalcy any sense of normalcy normal oh my god I can't say that word right now or any sense of like stability in their life and this is something that they'll probably never recover from so I hope that he's able to give investigators some information about where Suzanne is or I hope he's able to tell you know just I hope he's able to get off his high horse and just admit to what he did admit to where she is so that everyone can try to move on with their life if that's even possible at this point especially for his daughters but you know I feel that finding her body would bring a sense of closure to her family and her daughters so guys tell me what you think what do you think happened to Suzanne do you think she actually went on a bike ride do you think that Barry did it do you think that someone else did it tell me what you think put it in the comments don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for staying for the entire video if you're still here thank you so much for staying and i really hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you next time here at t-cell logic again my name is nancy and i hope you have a wonderful day and stay safe